In this video, we'll talk about some design guidelines for molded parts. Before you get started molding your parts, it's important to understand what it actually means to design an injection molded part. At the very core of this, it means that your part needs to have draft. When you mold a part, you need to be able to eject it from the mold. If you had perfectly perpendicular edges, then the mold wouldn't be able to be removed from the end result part. So that's the very core of the design guidelines, but there are many more guidelines that you need to follow. Several different companies that offer these types of services will offer up their own design guidelines. Now for the most part, molded design guideline is very generic, but there are several companies that offer slight tweaks to their own design guidelines. The one on the screen here is Solid Concepts. This is a very large company that offers rapid prototyping, composites, they also offer low production and full run injection molding. Now with that, you can see that they offer their own design guideline. And there's lots of information here, and this is very important that you read through it. Now the point of this video is not to tell you every single design guideline that you need to follow, but there are some very basic designs that you need to understand. For instance, when designing a molded part, you need to have a consistent wall thickness. That means that you don't want any extremely thick sections. This has a drastic effect on the cosmetic appearance of your part and also the structural integrity. And this is because as the plastic cools down inside the mold, thicker sections won't cure at the same time. So that means the thicker sections will actually start to pull inwards as they cool. So this is very important, the wall thickness and uniform walls. The next thing you need to worry about is how that thickness is actually being used. And there's several great examples on this side. For instance, if you look at the uniform walls and how you need to taper down to thinner sections, there's some great information here on how you need to do that. There's also great information on how to avoid shrinkage and voids. Now the voids are gonna be areas that aren't gonna be populated when the injection is happening. The molten plastic is pushed into the mold and it needs to be able to fill everywhere. So there's a lot of great information here on how to design and how to determine these things. As you can see, there's lots of information here on how to actually set up your bosses. There's lots of equations that determine the thickness, for instance. You can see that between 60 and 75%, the rib thickness is going to be of the overall part thickness. Now these are things that we're gonna handle when we create a template for our parts. All this information is very important to the integrity and the appearance of your final parts. And as we scroll down, you can see there's lots more information here, and this is all very important information. Draft angle is a very important one, and this is something that you need to talk to your actual mold house about. Some molding houses can get away with no draft, but you're going to have cosmetic imperfections on the surface that are created by dragging the mold and the part apart. If you have to have a rough appearance or a texture on the outside, that means that you're gonna to have to have a larger draft angle. Typically between three and five degrees is required when any kind of texture is used on the outside as opposed to a high polish finish. There's going to be restrictions on how deep the part can be. When you get into a part that's very deep for a very thin wall, you're gonna run into issues not only pulling it away from the mold, but how things are gonna cool and how they're actually gonna be injected. As we go down, you can see there's some requirements in terms of inner and outer radii when you're dealing with part thickness. As you can see here, the inner radii on this part is required to be half of the thickness of the part. So this is very good information and stuff that you need to consider because this type of thing is gonna be very early on in your part design and lots of things down the road can build on it or can have an effect if you have to go back and change this stuff. If you have to deal with molded inserts or heat melt inserts, this is very important to know as well because it's gonna determine how your boss is designed. Living hinges, this is also very important. There's some very stringent requirements on how the sections need to be laid out. You can see there's internal and external radii requirements, thickness, there's the area of population for the actual hinge needs to be located as a certain distance from the rest of the part. So again, this information is very crucial before you ever start designing. You need to have all this laid out. And there's more and more. You can see that it goes on if you're dealing with overmolding, two-shot molding, if you're doing gas assist, if you're doing things like blow molding, if you're creating bottles where you're not actually going to have an inside and outside section of your mold, but rather you're going to have an outside, what's called a shot, and then the gas that's actually pushing it out into the mold. 
So you can see there's a lot of great information here that's free available online to everybody and you can also download it as a PDF. There are other companies such as Proto Labs that offer rapid machining and low production molded design. And you can see they have their own design guidelines. Now, because this is a rapid molded design company, they typically have a little bit more stringent type of requirements when dealing with your parts. Now that's because their types of molds that are created are low production molds, typically 100 to 500 units. So that means that they have to be designed slightly different. For instance, their ejector pins need to be flat on the end where final molds can typically have a ground pin on the end. The surface finishes are gonna be very important. For instance, if we click on surface finish, you're gonna see there's requirements. They tell you that it's gonna be a higher cost if you go farther down this. But you can see as we have a non-cosmetic finish where low cosmetic finish is very different from dealing with diamond buff or very rough finish here. And these are going to require different types of draft angles. Now, as I said, I can't go through everything here in a video. I can't determine how many of these guidelines do or do not apply to your different types of designs. So it's very important before you get started that you look for some of these design guidelines. And there are several books out there you can purchase as well if you'd prefer to have that. But you need to understand the types of parts. You're going to be making 100 parts or if you're going to be making 100,000 parts. It can have a different effect on how you design your part and what kind of companies you go with. Several of these companies, such as Proto Mold and Solid Concepts, can actually send you out samples, kind of help you determine how to design your parts. Keep that in mind as well to get in touch with these companies and learn their requirements and where their limitations are and what kinds of things that you need to do in order to make sure that your part matches what they need to see. Because the last thing you want to do is spend days or weeks or even months designing parts. You send it off to a company and they say, well, we can't mold it because of this. When that information was spelled out clearly and could have really saved you a lot of time beforehand. So just know with a quick online search, you can get access to some of these great design guidelines that can really save you some time and help you narrow down how you need to determine your design and what kind of requirements that you can and cannot use.